But now I'm just so excited and I just can't wait. Hey, what is going on guys? And welcome back to another episode of Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. We're today. Holy moly, Master Choli, we got so much stuff to talk about. A lot of stuff in this update. Probably one of the biggest updates we've seen since February with all the Sith stuff. And we have a lot of stuff to talk about. Firstly, what we're going to be doing is capping our discussion. We started yesterday over our boy, R2-D2. Couple hours ago, he was added to the game. We see his kit in all of its glory. Our speculation was kind of there, but there's a lot of key stuff we need to look at. So we'll take a look at that at swgoh.gg. We'll then talk about some minor stuff that was added. And then lastly, the thing that I'm actually most excited for, this is something I've been kind of waiting for since last year, March of 2016. The Empire is getting a faction pass or some reworks as we've seen with General Veers. Now it's finally confirmed that R2-D2 is going to be a legendary type of event and I've called this so many months ago. I said, hey, if you want R2-D2, you better start gearing up and farming your Empire characters. And you need Empire characters for Jedi Luke. Jedi Luke. Jedi Luke. Okay, so I was a little off on that, but hey, at least we're finally seeing Empire characters be used for something. I've been sitting on these guys for so long and it's good to see that on day one i should be able to seven star r2d2 if all goes well assuming we do unlock him and many of us will let's see what we're in store for we have a lot of stuff going on here this guy is jam-packed full of stuff now the first ability i want to look at is electroshock prod before i said that we probably could stun and there is going to be a stun there's an 80 percent chance to stun for one turn and then this attack deals 30 percent more damage to targets that are burnt or the burning debuff we'll talk about that in a few moments here now this next thing here is really getting people worked up on how is this going to work in the game and that is smoke screen it kind of works like the scimitar in some way essentially what's going to happen is that a target ally is going to gain foresight and advantage for two turns and all allies will gain stealth for two turns and r2d2 will gain 40 percent turn meter so it sounds like so far at this point this is going to work quite well with the darth maul team is this going to kill the darth maul zeta i don't know quite yet we have some other stuff to look at but it seems like this can work in a sith uh, darth maul team because they focus on stealth so much so that's going to be quite interesting and something we haven't quite seen yet in terms of actual characters using this type of ability next is improvise and then this kind of makes you wonder well this could destroy the maul meta well let's take a look real quick it's going to deal special damage to all enemies, so everyone's going to get smacked with this, and it's going to inflict the burning debuff for three turns. That is a long time, and this attack cannot be evaded. So the mall teams, they can't get away from this, and essentially what burning does, as we take a look at on the forums, burning's going to deal damage over time, and it minimizes the chance to evade. So they won't be able to evade improvise, and once they get hit, they're going to get inflicted with burning, and burning's gonna make sure that they cannot evade as much. So kind of like an evasion down to some extent. So, so far we see this is going to work with a mall team. And then we also see that this could work against the mall team. So kind of seems like there's a balance there depending on how you'd like to use them. On top of all this, R2-D2 will have two Zeta abilities with the first one being combat analysis. While R2-D2 is active, he gives all allies plus 10% critical chance and 10% accuracy. Yet again, another reason why this should work against the mall meta, because you're going to be whacking your shots on those Sith characters that constantly evade from you. Also in this ability, R2-D2 is kind of a passive cleanser, and pretty much what's going to happen, anytime a light side character scores a critical hit, they can cleanse themselves from the debuffs that they have. This might work great in Captain Rex teams, because as you know, Captain Rex cannot always dispel the debuffs from you, so R2-D2 will kind of help fill in those periods where you won't be able to call in a, an ability to get rid of those debuffs off your allies. And we could not see this in the picture that was teased yesterday, but he has a fifth unique ability that has a Zeta and it's called Number Crunch. And holy cow, this is another one of those giant paragraph essays for a character, probably one of the longest ones in the game. So just buckle down for a second. So at the start of each battle, <laughs> R2D2 is going to gain 10% max protection for each droid ally, 10% offense for each Galactic Republic ally, so that's how the Galactic Republic ally tag is going to work, 10% max health for each rebel ally, and 10% potency for each resistance ally. And at the start of the battle, and when R2-D2 revives, 
other droid, Galactic Republic, Rebel, and Resistance allies gain 10% of R2-D2's max protection, offense, max health, and potency until R2-D2 is defeated. So R2 is going to come into battle and say, here, just take a little bit of everything, why don't you? And he's going to be quite a fast character. 157 speed is definitely very good. More on the fast side, the average right now is 127, so he's definitely above that. He's also going to have decent potency. 33% is definitely sufficient for Arena. And he's got decent health and protection for a support character. About 24,000 health. 22,000 protection, that is enough to get the job done to make sure he is sticking around in battle as long as possible. But as we see in this picture, although there's not a lot of stun cuffs, you better start stocking up on your Mark III Carbanti sensor arrays, your Mark V stun guns, as well as your Mark III hollow projectors. So my final thoughts on R2-D2 is I don't think he's going to just destroy and get rid of the mall meta because he can work with the mall meta as we see, but at the same time, if you're using him, you can definitely have a great counter against mall meta Team. And sometime later this week, I will try to upload a video to help you get ready for this R2D2 event. If you are curious, I did make an Empire farming guide a couple months ago. Most of it is still very relevant. So if you have no Empire characters, check that out and start seeing what Empire characters you should farm. But that table will be completely different because as we see with the Veer stuff, a lot of those characters I said were bad a couple months ago. They might be really good in the next upcoming weeks. Some other minor things being added into the game. It doesn't show it right now because it hasn't refreshed. But if you're looking forward to getting Darth Nihilus, Sith Trooper, and Sith Assassin, they will be tossed in the shard shop because as we see in the patch notes, Darth Nihilus, Sith Trooper, and Sith Assassin are going to be free to play players. Now, Sith Trooper and Sith Assassin, they're going to be in Cantina battles. One will be at 8B for Sith Trooper and Sith Assassin will be at 8C. So they're pretty accessible. However, Darth Nihilus will be on the hard dark side battle 9A. So another very difficult battle to complete. And what I've been noticing with the past few characters brought out to the game, the characters that are kind of the diamonds of the game, as we saw Darth Nihilus, he was kind of the centerpiece during the Sith update. Director Krennic was kind of the centerpiece during that little empire phase that we had a couple months ago. Those characters, if you don't buy them, they're going to make them free to play definitely, but they will be difficult to farm. So if you really need to get these characters and you really want them and you don't think you can farm them on the hard battles as fast as possible it might be worth going into the shard shop i just got krennic to six stars today and i'm kind of happy because it's going to take a long time to get him to seven stars the normal way so think about your priorities if they're really important go for it but i would say don't farm sith trooper and don't farm sith assassin the shard shop because they're easy to get if anything go for darth Nihilus because he will be a real pain to farm in the long run and the last minor thing i just want to point out is that the galactic republic tag is in full swing and we got loads of people in this particular faction now now r2d2 is the only one that's truly using the galactic republic tag as a character unsure how the other characters will use it maybe they'll add additional abilities that take advantage of this and just a heads up this week in my chewbacca review will be going up however i recorded it way before this update so i'm going to say chewbacca only has the scoundrel tag but as we see he also has the galactic republic tag so just want to point that out he is also included in this i don't think this is going to make or change characters like chewbacca until they rework more characters and implement this galactic war tag and this might be important because we're seeing all these galactic republic characters come around this might signal some future event or some future day where they have a separatist versus a galactic republic era and the last thing i want to point out which is by far my favorite thing that's going to happen is the general veers rework he's got a whole new stance he's not a boy scout anymore guys this guy is a full-on imperial and i'm really looking forward to what he's got cooking unfortunately he is one of the few few empire characters i do not have at seven stars or geared up all the way because i never expected him to be good and he never had any use in the past if you look behind me though when we go back one page i have plenty of empire characters to seven star the r2d2 event but i've also got some oddball characters geared up i have magra trooper at gear 10 stormtrooper at gear 10 looks like i have snow trooper at gear 10 and the reason why I'm pointing this out is because when we go back to General Veers, we see they added an Imperial Trooper tag and they said on the forums to stay tuned next week because it's going to change all these Imperial Troopers. I'm not sure how big this rework is going to be, but they said Empire Faction rework. So that could mean we got some big news coming on. So this might mean that my investment that I made back in March of 2016 might 
finally pay off. I'm hoping for a lot of stuff. I've endured so much pain gearing those guys up, so I'm really hoping they do get some sort of amazing rework because Magma Trooper, Storm Trooper, and Snow Trooper aren't the best characters in the game by far, with Magma Trooper probably being the best out of those three, but still far from what the game is currently. So I'm gearing up all these characters and those guys for sure, including General Veers, you will be getting gameplay from me personally because I need to showcase those characters and all the hard work that I paid off a long, long time ago. So let's close up this video by looking at General Veers' new kit and we first see with Daring Attack, he's going to deal damage to a target enemy with a 70% chance each to grant speed up for two turns to General Veers as well as a random Imperial Trooper ally who doesn't have it. As you, you will be seeing, General Veers is really trying to push the Empire, make them faster and stronger, and with Ruthless Assault, it's actually quite awesome now. It's going to deal special damage to all enemies with a 55% chance to inflict ability block for one turn, which is something he's already had in the past. It deals 10% more damage for each living rebel enemy, and you get... Oh, this is something so beautiful, guys. I've been wanting something like this for such a long time. He can call all other Imperial Trooper allies to assist, dealing 40% less damage. This is essentially Commander Cody a lot better and for the Empire characters. This is something I've been waiting for and I'm really hoping this Imperial Trooper thing that's coming out next week is going to dominate. I'm just so excited for this. And the leader ability got a little bump besides giving 30% offense to Empire allies, which we've had in the past, Imperial Trooper allies gain 20 speed and gain 10% turn meter whenever they gain a buff. And if you use Snow Trooper, anytime someone gets defeated once Snow Trooper is active, he's going to be giving a lot of turn meter. So this is going to pair well with someone like Snow Trooper, assuming Snow Trooper doesn't even get reworked. And then lastly, he has a Zeta ability, and most likely I'm going to be a sucker and invest in it because I need some fun Empire characters. And with Aggressive Tactician, whenever an enemy is defeated while Veers is active, Imperial Trooper allies gain offense up for two turns, gain 50% turn meter, and recover 10% protection. And while Veers is active, Imperial Trooper allies have plus 15% critical chance. So with all the stuff we have right now, I'm already seeing this working very well with Snow Trooper. Getting 50% turn meter upon an enemy being defeated just goes hand in hand with Snow Trooper and that's a lot of turn meter being gained. So you guys will most likely see me Zeta this ability because I'm just going to have fun finally put these troopers into action and I'm really looking forward to what is coming up next week. I don't know if you guys should go all out. I've already made the investment a long time ago. Let me take the burden and show you guys if they are good or not and hopefully I can get that within the next week or whenever they finally push that update out. Now, I wish I could just go back in time and tell the old Arnold T-101, hey, buddy, that Stormtrooper you're gearing up, it's going to be worth it a year from now because look at this video. One of my first five videos, I was bragging about how much I loved Empire characters. I mean, heck, it's over 30 minutes long. I had a lot to say about it apparently back then. But now I'm just so excited and I just can't wait.